Hello there, this is Irv Shapiro, a.k.a. Dr. Vax, here to learn with you about 3D printing. We have a 3D printer right here. This is a Prusa i3 Mark III MK3 printer. It is printing actually a test pattern that's going to take four hours to print. It'll end up being about this high, and it's doing it layer by layer. So let's talk in general about what 3D printing is. 3D printing is an additive manufacturing process that produces three-dimensional objects layer by layer. Now, what do I mean by layer by layer? Well, think about building a brick home. In a brick home, you put a row and a column of bricks down, layer by layer, adding it up in order to create that structure. We produce parts or products or homes with layers because it's easier than producing single large slabs. Before the invention of reinforced concrete, there really was no alternative than to build up homes, buildings, layer by layer. So at some level, 3D printing is returning to an older process. 3D printing, in reality, is not uh, that new. The first 3D printers were produced in the 1980s. Uh, they were produced using a process where lasers or light were used to cure a resin layer by layer. It was a very expensive process. These machines were and still are, in many cases, hundreds of thousands of dollars, and they were used to build prototypes because prior to 3D printing or additive manufacturing, if you wanted to prototype a part for a car for an automobile, you had to go to the machine shop and produce it by hand, and it could take days or weeks to prototype a single part. Now, while 3D printing is not fast, a 3D print can often go for hours, or in some cases even days, it's much faster than traditional prototyping technology. Now, what's changed? What's changed is, instead of spending hundreds of thousands of dollars for 3D printers, we now can spend hundreds of dollars for 3D printers. This particular printer I purchased as a kit for about $750. It's available assembled for about $1,000. But there are 3D printers that use this same process, perhaps without some of the advanced features that are available for hundreds of dollars. And what is this process? Well, instead of using light to cure a resin, this takes a filament, melts it, extrudes it onto a print bed. And it moves that bed in two dimensions, potentially. In this case, it's moving it in, in one direction, and that's back and forth, and that would be the y-axis. The printhead is moving horizontally, that's the x-axis, and then the whole bed is lifted up, that's the z-axis. So how does this work? Well, how many of you have used a um, hot glue gun? This is a regular hot glue gun. This happens to be a Black & Decker hot glue gun. Might be 15 years old. I've used this for years. This is a stick of hot glue. Hot glue melts at about 120 degrees um, Celsius, which is about 250 degrees Fahrenheit. Here's a line of hot glue, and I can produce here now another line of hot glue. And if I wait until that cools, I can put a, another line on top. And I could build up a three-dimensional shape by using hot glue. Now hot glue in particular is designed to stay soft for a longer period of time. Whereas 3D printing filament is designed to solidify, it's a thermoplastic that's designed to solidify very, very quickly. So unlike hot glue, which is not very precise, the nozzle on this 3D printer extrudes plastic at 0.40 millimeters. Very, very thin lines. 
And it builds those up line by line, row by row, column by column. Now, what can we build with a 3D printer? Well, the first thing I printed on this printer was a test print, which was a logo, which is the same as the printer's logo. Prusa is the name of the company. Joseph Prusa is the inventor of this particular style of printer. Then another test print, which I printed, was a whistle. A working whistle that came off this printer in about 20 minutes. Not fast, but I could customize this whistle in moments and print, you know, 20 of them a day or so. Now, other things that people print is people print a lot of toys and figurines, but they also print parts that are used in other machines. All of the orange and black parts you see on this printer, in particular all of the orange parts, the black parts, some of them are aluminum, all of the orange parts are printed on Prusa 3D printers by Prusa to produce 3D printers. Now, I had a problem that many of us have. Oops, I dropped my problem. Let me pick it up. And that is, I have a lot of cables hanging out at my desk. So I wanted a way to organize those cables. So I went online, I went to a site called Thingiverse, and I downloaded a 3D model for those cables. Now, but I didn't really like this 3D model. And the reason was not that it doesn't hold the cable, it does a very good job of that, but that you're supposed to just glue it on with this thin strip to the side of your desk. I thought I could improve upon there, that. So I took and I went into a 3D modeling program. I took the original model and I added a back to it. And I can drill holes or glue this on and add this to the desk. Now I printed it in a very small size because it's fast as a prototype. Then I printed it in a little nicer plastic, in a white plastic, as a production print. What we're going to do now is switch over to the computer and show you how I found this model, how I loaded it into a computer-aided design program, how I used that program along with a slicer in order to produce a file for this printer. So let's define a couple of those terms. Computer-aided design is just a computer program used to design either two-dimensional plans, architectural plans, let's say, for a house, or three-dimensional objects. I'm using a program called Fusion 3D, which is really quite a state-of-the-art program that's available at no cost for hobbyists and available for a very, relatively modest cost. Uh, in comparison to historical pricing, which was thousands and thousands of dollars for advanced CAD programs, for a relatively modest cost for commercial use. Then once you produce a 3D model, in this case, I modeled this uh, filament, this, I'm sorry, this wire holder. You load it into a slicer. Now what does a slicer do? Well, it takes a 3D object and it divides it into layers because our printer is printing a layer at a time. So a slicer divides it into layers. It knows about the characteristics of the filament you're using, how long it takes it for it to cool before we can go ahead and put another layer on top. Now my hot glue is now cool, so I could put another layer on top. So let's switch to the computer. We're going to find a model. We're going to load it into Fusion 360. We're gonna show you how you would modify it. Then we're going to slice it and get it ready for this printer. At the end of the day, in literally minutes, and then at most a couple hours, I could produce a prototype of a plastic part uh, using PLA, a biodegradable plastic. I could use ABS, the plastic that's used for Legos. I could print with not on nylon with nylon on this printer. I could print with carbon reinforced nylon to make very strong parts. And so desktop 3D printing is going to change our world. Let me give you another quick example. Let's say there's a senior member of your family who needs a little help in the kitchen. And you want to produce some bigger knobs for various components in their kitchen, maybe for the drawers, maybe for the silverware. Maybe you want to 
build a new shelving unit with connectors. All possible on a 3D printer. Okay, so let's go over to the computer and get started there. Okay, now that we've begun learning a bit about 3D printing, let's look at some of the tools that you can use on a computer to assist you. The first thing you need is to find models to print. There are many places on the internet that you can find these models. One of the original places, one of the first places, and still perhaps one of the best is Thingiverse. So let's look at Thingiverse together. And when you go into Thingiverse, which is this Thingiverse.com, you can search for something. So let's say I want to build a bookshelf. I could search for a bookshelf and I would find all different types of components that I could print. As an example right here in the beginning are those little twist brackets that you get on a Kia furniture. If you wanted to produce those yourselves, you could. Uh, here's another example of a bookshelf. Here are some uh, stackable bookshelves, wide range of things. In our particular case, I was looking for a cable holder. So I Googled cable holder and ultimately found this design. Now, while the printed example here is not very good, the design looked promising. And when you find the design, you can find it in a couple different ways. Some designs only have an STL file. If they only have an STL file, then you can download the STL file, load it in your printer, and print it as is. The only modifications you probably can make are make it a bit bigger or smaller. Others also have a CAD file, computer-aided design file. In particular, this is a computer-aided design file for Fusion 360. So I have a copy of Fusion 360 on my computer, and that's how I modified this part from having an extended back I could attach to my desk versus the original part that was very, very narrow. So let's look at uh, what I did. Okay, now that we've loaded our model into Fusion 360, let's look at how we will manipulate it in order to add a bracket so it will connect more easily so we can connect it more easily uh, with our desktop. So in Fusion 360, the model comes in as a three-dimensional drawing and we can rotate it and look at it from various angles. Now we're going to take and initially rotate it around so that we can see it from the side and we're going to add a feature. To add a feature, we're going to create a sketch and once again, this is not a full tutorial on using this application. Instead, it's an attempt to give you a perspective on what's required in order to print on a 3D printer. We're going to add a rectangle to that object, and we'll just drag this out an approximate amount. Double click, and then we'll use the dimension capability to precisely set dimensions for that particular object. And let's make this 12 millimeters. And we're going to once again dimension the other side of the object. And we'll make this 2 millimeters. OK, now we need to take this two-dimensional sketch. And you can see that it's two-dimensionals, because if I rotate it, and then let's pan over a bit so we can see it. If I rotate it and pan over, you see it's not a three-dimensional object. It's just a very, very thin plane. So we want to convert it into a three-dimensional object. So to do that, we're going to extrude it, click on the object, and we'll drag that out to right about there. We don't need to be exact for this purpose. And now if I rotate, you'll see that we have a three-dimensional object. I can take and go into 3D print make mode. I'm not going to send it to their utility. I can go here and 
save this as a STL file. Click OK here. And then I can take that STL file and load it into my slicer. So let's go through the components again. You start with a 3D object. It can be an object you download load off the internet. You can modify that object, <coughs> excuse me, in a program like Fusion 360. You then take that three-dimensional object and divide it into very thin layers, like the brick layers in a house. Those very thin layers are then printed by your printer. So let's take a look here at um, how you would load that into an object. And you'll see that when we loaded this into Prusa Control, a 3D slicer, unfortunately came in on the edge. Well, if we attempt to print this this way, this part here is going to basically bend off because this is hot plastic. That's not gonna work. So we need to take and begin by rotating this. Let's see if we can. Okay, and we're gonna rotate that 270 degrees. Oops, I have to select it in order to rotate it. 270 degrees. And then I'm actually also going to scale it up to 125%. And now it will print. Now we're going to get a little bit of drooping underneath these flat layers. And you'll see that in the final print. We're going to generate that file. And then we could see exactly how it would get printed. So see the layers going up here? That's exactly how this printer would handle this. After we've generated the G code, we save that G code to an SD card. We take the SD card out of our computer, we put it into our printer, and we print it. And the printer will follow the instructions in the G code which is just the code that tells it how to print layer by layer. So let's review. A 3D printer is in essence very, very similar to a hot glue gun. It's very, very similar to the process used by a brick bricklayer. You put down a layer at a time, in this case of hot melted filament, plastic filament, different types of filament. PLA is one type of filament that's very, very common. ABS, the type of plastic used in Legos, is another type. Nylon would be another type of filament. You take and you put down layers of this fil melted filament in order to create a three-dimensional object. The process of printing on a 3D printer is not fast. A complex object can take many hours to print. But there's no upfront tooling. There's no upfront manufacturing. There are no molds to be made. And on demand by going into a CAD program, computer-aided design, then putting that design through a slicer, you are able to create on-demand objects, on-demand components. Thank you for learning about 3D printing with me. This is Dr. Vax signing off.